myself sudhakar barbade assistant professor electronics and telecommunication engineering walchand institute of technology solapur in continuation with the previous lecture today 8051 io programming part 2 we will discuss in this first learning outcome at the end of this session students will will be able to describe key features of 8051 io ports and its programming contents here we will see port 2 and port 3 features and its programming first we will see what is the dual role of port 2 port 2 can be used along with p0 p0 in the previous lecture we saw that it can be used as an address and data address of lower 8 bits and data that is d0 to d8 so port 2 can be used along with p0 to provide 16 bit address for the external memory that means port 2 provides the higher byte of address of 16 bit address when 8051 is connected to external memory p2 is used for the upper 8 bits that is a to a15 of the 16 bit address and while using this for as address it cannot be used for io programming now we will see programming of port 2 first we'll see how it can be configured as a input port in the following code port 2 is configured first as an input port by writing once to it and then data is received from the port and sent to p1 so as said earlier on reset all ports are configured as an output port but when we are using it as a input port they must be configured first so these first two instructions move a comma hash 0 fff and move p2 comma a these two instructions are used for configuring port 2 as an input port and what is done here is uh, port 2 is read since we are configured as a input port port 2 is read into accumulator and accumulator contents are sent back to p1 continuously with this loop so this way what happens is whatever contents of p2 is transferred to p1 with this example now there is a question what is the hex code for configuring port 2 as input port you pause the video and answer the question you might have thought over the question port 2 is configured as a input port and the question is what will be the hex code since we have to write all once that is uh, all 8 bits should be one so as to configure as input port all 8 ones means it is a fff now come to this programming port 2 as output port since there is no need of configuring a port as output port we will not do anything here configuration only what we are doing is uh, this code will send out to port 2 the alternating values 55h and aah that is all the bits of port 2 toggle continuously so here first 55h is moved into the accumulator and the same is out to port with some delay it is again complemented and this is in a loop after complementing we get ah and this ah and 55h will be sent continuously through some delay now we will see port 3 dual role port 3 has additional function of providing some extremely important signals as shown so these are the port 3 pins p30 to p37 eight pins are there and this is what the function associated with each pin 
of a port 3. Port 3 0 th pin is having a function of RXD that means uh, reading serial data and the here pin number is given. Uh, pin number 10 is uh, port 3 pin 0 uh, which can be used as an uh, read serial data. P3.1 can be used as a uh, transmitting serial data. Port 3.2 can be used as an interrupt 0. This is an active low signal. Port 3.3 is used as a again a interrupt pin that is INT1. Again this is an active low signal. Port 3.4 is used with the timer 0. T0 means timer 0. P3.5 with timer 1 and P3.6 and P3.7 these are used as a uh, read and read and write commands to either IO devices or memory. So WR stands for writing again this is an active low signal RD bar is for reading. As we saw port 3 how it can be configured as a input port. Since we know already uh, port 3 when we are using it as an input port it, it must be configured first as an input port by writing once to it and then data is received from the port and sent to P1. That means whatever data received on port 3 will be sent to port 1 with this code. So first two instructions again are for uh, configuring port 3 as a input port by writing uh, hash 0 FFH. So with this port 3 is configured as an input port. Then port 3 is read by using this move A comma P3 instruction. This is sent to port 1 again and this is in a loop. So continuously whatever is there on port 3 will be sent to port 1. Here we will see how this uh, port 3 can be configured as an output port. Since there is no need of specifically configuring it as output port, we will skip those two instructions which are used for configuration. configuration. The following port will continuously send out to port 3 the alternating values 55H and AAH. So first 55H is moved into the accumulator, the same contents is moved to port 3 or sent to port 3. After some delay the port uh, accumulator is complemented and again it jumps back here. The complemented value AH will be sent now to port 3. So this is in a loop. So what happens is here is port 3 whatever is in port 3 is complemented every time with initial value of 55H and the other value is AH. Next feature of all the ports of 8051 is read, modify and write in a single instruction. So how this is done and what is the use of it we will see. The ports in the 8051 can be accessed by the read, modify, write technique. This feature saves many lines of code by combining in a single instruction all three actions that is reading the port, modifying it and writing to the port. So the following code describes it. Here what is done is port P1 is loaded with the immediate value 55H move p1 comma hash 55h this instruction loads 55h into p1 and here in the second this instruction is very important this instruction does three tasks that is reading the port modifying the value and writing back to the port so this xlr stands for xor the contents of p1 p1 consists of 55h with immediate value 0 ff h so what happens here is what 
P1 content that is phi phi H is XORed with FFH. That means first port 1 is read here. Okay. And that is uh, XORed with FFH and whatever the result of XOR operation is written back into P1 register, uh, P1 port. After some delay, this process is repeated again. So this gives the benefit of decreasing the code length. Another feature of ports of 8051 is it can be addressed with a single bit, that is single bit addressability of the port. There are times that we need to access only one or two bits of the port instead of the entire eight bits. A powerful feature of 8051 IO ports is their capability to access individual bits of the port without altering the rest of the bits in that port. Means here the individual port pins we can use as an input or output. For example, the following code toggles the bit P1.2 continuously. Only port 1 is used, but entire port 1 is not used. Only port 1 pin 2 is used. And that is toggled continuously. So here, so whatever the value of this P12 is complemented. After some delay, again this uh, loop jumps back to this. Again it complements whatever the value and this process is repeated. References. The 8051 microcontroller architecture programming and applications by Kenneth Ayla and another is the 8051 microcontroller and embedded systems by Muhammad Ali Mazdi. So these two, two books I have used to prepare these slides. Thank you very much.